How's it going guys? Coach Avi here. Welcome back to another uh, video. Today we're continuing the preseason series. I got one, two, three, four, five. Five guys out here. Coach Javi's injured. Just getting old basically. So I'm taking the day off. We're going to do a touch base session. Lots of uh, partner stuff. Some rondos. Maybe some bigger possession stuff if we... if some extra people decide to show up a little bit late. Steven Carroll, 919, thanks for showing up. And then I got Georgie over there, obviously, and Kit Man Moy, who are also gonna be in the session. So, let's go. Yeah, for Livonia, right? Yeah, Oh, that makes sense, huh? <laughs> I went on training with Livonia at one time, but... I see you trying to get camera time, Moy. So for today's video, I'm gonna do a voiceover. I'll break down the exercises, kind of go through some of the coaching points and what I'm looking for. And uh, we're gonna do the video that way. Something a little different today. Enjoy. So we started off with rondos and that was after the warm-up, obviously. I wanted to make sure they got a little bit of an extended warm-up because it was very, very cold out. So it was about 10, 15 minutes dynamic. And then after that, at least another 10, 15 doing the rondo. Um, I don't want to go into the harder exercises a little too early because especially on a day where it's so cold outside, you don't want to risk injury, people pulling anything. So I made sure I gave him plenty of time for the warm-up and the rondo. After that, we went into this transitional rondo where it's 4v2. Uh, the guys with the possession of the ball are trying to connect five passes before getting it to the player on the other side and switching the play. Three of them will join in and then they will make it 4v2 on that side again, connect five more passes and then try to bring it back to the other side. So obviously the two guys in the middle, they're just trying to win the ball. They're trying to prevent them from switching it. And the guys on the outside are trying to connect their passes and then switch it. So some of the coaching points for this one are if you are one of the players trying to keep possession of the ball, the very first thing is keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate yourself. Look to make decisions early and then you can always change your mind. But before you receive the ball, look to see where the other players are at. You should have at least two players uh, as an option most of the time. So just have an idea so when you receive the ball, because it's so quick and it's a tight space, see if you can either open up, play to the other side, or just play right back, keep it simple. The one thing you do not want to do is you don't want to force the ball going to the other side, because oftentimes when you force the ball, especially if the defenders are well set, they're going to be able to intercept it. So what I look for as a coach in this exercise is can the players have a little bit of patience to keep the ball, you don't have to switch it over on the fifth pass. You can get up to you know, 10, 15 passes if you want. You do want to look to switch it at some point. So you don't, you don't want to keep the ball forever, but we're looking to see if they have some patience to know when the right time is to transition the ball over. Um, if you're one of the defenders in this exercise, you have to start looking at what the objective of the team in possession is. So if the objective of the team in possession is to connect passes and then switch it over, what you're trying to do is you're trying to prevent that ball from being switched over. So as opposed to just running in circles and trying to win the ball the whole time, what you want to do is you want to be able to prevent that far pass or that, that transition. So try to get them to keep the ball. And it's okay if they keep the ball because obviously you're outnumbered. But try to get them to keep the ball. Eventually, they're going to make a mistake. They're either going to play a bad pass, someone's going to take a bad touch. But make sure that you guys are guarding the transitional pass. So like I said, don't run around in a circle chasing the ball the whole time. But can you organize yourselves so that they can't play that pass across? Um, we're going to highlight one situation here, uh, just something very, very simple that maybe some of you guys don't think about. I think about it because I'm a coach, but the ball gets played back here. He's stuck with his options, and what he does is he tries to do this little flick up thing. The reason why we don't like that, even though sometimes it looks cool and it looks, oh, like everybody's going to think, oh, that's a, you know, creative and that's that's showing a lot of flair. What we don't, the reason why we don't want them to do that is because it takes longer for the next person to bring the ball onto the ground and then find a pass. And if they have to take a little bit longer, it gives the defenders enough time to get over, cut off the other passing angles, close down the space, and then eventually win the ball. Just keep it simple. There's no need to do all these creative little flares, back heels especially. Use the inside of your foot, open up your body, look for your options before you receive the ball, and then if the option closes and you can change your mind quick enough, change your mind, play it somewhere else. But none of the fancy stuff, just keep it simple, especially coaches at the higher levels. That's what they want you to do. They don't care how fancy you are, but more importantly, they want to make sure that you can keep the ball and you're not someone that puts your teammates in bad spots or someone who loses the ball consistently. Two, two right, two right. Oh, one okay. back, 
20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Put on. So after that, we went into some more individualized exercises, partner exercises. I like to do these usually at the beginning if I'm doing a regular individual training session. If I'm doing this with a group, uh, depending on the type of session it is, this one was a fitness session. So the reason why I did it after we had already done some of the, the games and some of the possession and the, and the rondos is because they were already tired and this exercise, depending on how long you do it, will get them really, really tired. So it's a good kind of like a fitness uh, portion to the exercise and if they're already tired, it's just gonna push them a little bit more. Um, what I like about using these hurdles is that, like I said, it tires you out, so it's a good fitness exercise, but also it gets you into the habit of passing the ball and moving right away. So you don't want the players who pass the ball and then they look at see where their pass goes and then you know two or three seconds later they realize they have to move i like using these hurdles and different types of exercises like this because you start getting into their head that after they make a pass they immediately have to make some sort of a different movement um so we did the variations that i think we did with this one were left foot only right foot only both feet and then jumping the last one was two feet jumps uh, over and back so by the end of it they were pretty exhausted we did this exercise for about 10 12 minutes and uh, their feet were were pretty tired from all the up and down over the hurdles right. we'll start off with a pass they'll receive it as you pass them the ball you call out the number so georgie passes the ball calls out a number three he dribbles to that number got around it around it comes back plays to georgie opens up again and then georgie plays it back again four, four and then he goes that way just like that Play it back to Georgie as soon as you run the cone and then open up again and receive. Okay? So this is another fitness exercise. What I like to incorporate in some of my sessions are those exercises where it makes them think a little bit. So if you have a partner calling out numbers, then they have to start thinking about where they need to go and they don't have a pre-planned pattern where they can just basically shut their brains off and just follow the pattern the whole time. So in this one, they have to receive the ball, but they also have to uh, think about where they're gonna go with it next. So if they have to go behind to one of the cones at the back, then they have to open up and they have to be able to do that before they receive the ball. So what you're looking for in this one is how long do they take before they can react and can they go right away and do it really quickly? So uh, oftentimes the beginners on these exercises, when they receive the ball, they'll stop it, they'll think, and then they'll finally turn or they're gonna go wherever the cone is. The more advanced players will be able to adjust their body as soon as they hear that number or the color or whatever the, um, the variable is they'll be able to adjust their body so that on their first touch, they're kind of already going in that direction. Uh, make sure the guys who are doing the passing and the calling out of the numbers are calling them out loud enough so that the players in the middle can hear, especially right now, because there was three different people calling you know, different numbers at all times, so they had to be nice and loud so they could understand. Uh, again, another fitness exercise because I made the squares big enough to where they had to dribble quite a bit of distance before they came back in. If you wanna make it a little less intense, then you can close down the square a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And uh, if you wanna make it more intense, obviously you can make the square even bigger. I think we did a few reps with the ball. And then the last few reps, we just took out the ball and the players would just call out a number. They would sprint all the way around the cone, come back to the middle. They would call out another number, sprint around that cone. And uh, that was a little bit more tiring as well. Um, but I believe that's, uh, that's the end of the session. Four, four. Two. Three, three, four. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Two, two, one. All right, Georgie, session's over. Your thoughts? Good session, man. I like getting a lot of touches, getting some fitness in. More was going uh, under the cones and under uh, the hurdles. <laughs> under <and> the <laughs> See, he's so tired, he can't even think straight. Good little fitness session for today. Moy, come here. Your thoughts on the fitness session uh, for today? It was good, I just wasn't expecting it because we usually do some like dumb game that he wants us to do and we never actually do drills. Yes, Rod. It's about time we do drills. I'm so out of shape, so I uh, definitely need it. Oh my God. Thanks, Moy. Appreciate it. Camera time's over, thank you very much. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hope you guys liked it, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, uh, make sure you guys subscribe for future videos. I'll try and incorporate a lot more training videos kind of like I used to do back in the old days If you're an OG of the channel, then you know, that's what I'm all about and The other big thing as well is make sure you guys subscribe to my new podcast uh, It's a new channel here on YouTube and I'm gonna try and get it on iTunes and Spotify and all those other places So you can just listen to it 
but uh, I'll leave the link in the description below as well as somewhere up here so you guys can go and subscribe to my new podcast channel where we're going to be talking all sorts of you know football related content but just other stuff in general and I think it's going to be a great way for me to get a lot more informative and educational content out to you guys directly so go ahead and subscribe to that so that's it for this one until next time and adios muchachos